Hi, I'm Dan Schmidt. I do a weekly television show called Team Chicago Challenge. For YouTube, I put a lot of great clips up, and uh, I like to hear from my audience. So my email is teamdan45 at gmail.com. So I got a request from Davey, I forgot to write down his last name, but he wanted to see two shows from 1997 on YouTube, and I said I would dig these out because I like putting great stuff up on, and I, I do have some of the best racing footage anybody's captured. This is 1997, Bitter End Enduro, put on, the Bitter End Enduro was put on by the Brush Poppers, which was an AMA club in Western Illinois, and uh, always a great event. I always had a great time covering the event and looking at the event, and I think this has got the helmet cam stuff, so let's, let's check out the Bitter End Enduro 1997, and remember um, to send me an email, let me know what you think of this, Team Dan, 45 at gmail.com. This is Team Chicago Challenge, where we're just west of Rock Falls, Illinois, and we're here for the Bitter End Enduro, and I don't know if it's bitter or not, it's about 40 degrees, the wind picked up, but uh, it's an 80 mile Enduro, it's two loops, the Team Chicago WR250, and I just put new tires on the ice race tires, I only rode in the dirt for about five, six miles, I hope the thing holds up, and uh, I hope I have a great time, and if uh, everything goes right, I'm going to wear the helmet cam until the first checkpoint, so uh, let's Let's go, we'll watch some of the starts, the riders meeting, and then uh, I'm going to be out there riding. To watch the riders meeting, Terry Gerken, one of the members of the Brush Poppers Motorcycle Club, and over 140 riders showed up for this annual event. Riders came from Iowa, Wisconsin, throughout Illinois, Indiana. It's going to be a pretty popular event. It's a nice way to finish out the season. It's a pretty easy run. And I'll tell you, I had big fun coming out here in the past, and I'm looking forward to riding today. And earlier, we had a chance to talk to this member of the Brush Poppers. So let's go to that interview with Terry as the meeting breaks up. I'm with Terry Gerken, who's one of the members of the Brush Poppers Motorcycle Club, and you're the guys putting on this Bitter and Enduro. Now, how many years have you guys been doing this? Event? This is our 27th year. Oh, really? Running the same train, uh, basically? In around the Morrison area, that's yeah, correct. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so what is what is the intent of your club? How many Enduros do you guys put on a year? We put on two a year, mm -hmm. uh, where we have a spring run, is kind of a tough run, and this fall run is just kind of a fun, easy, well, let's just ride around type right. of event. Now, do you run Enduros yourself? Yes, I do. Uh, I go to Iowa, out to Wisconsin, Indiana, all over the place. And uh, how do you compare this Enduro to the other ones you got to challenge? Uh, the challenge today will be the riders who are smart in their timekeeping, and stay on the trail and just use your head. That that type of rider today will do quite well. Okay, well I'm just going to go out there and go as fast as I can because I, I, one of these days I'm going to be good enough to keep, keep track of time. That's the thing. Keep right. at it. Just right. have right. fun. That's right. Okay, well thanks a lot and uh, thanks for uh, having this event because yeah. every year it's big fun for me. Well we enjoy the guys coming out. Right. And right. that's what it's all about. Good. Okay, thanks. You bet. We're watching the start. And one of the groups, they start four at a time. Everybody's assigned a minute. The event started at 10 o'clock, and your minutes are based on how many minutes after 10 o'clock. That's Steve Vegan doing the countdown as this group takes off. This is a timed event. You're supposed to maintain a 24 mile an hour average. It's a combination of fields and wood sections. These riders head over towards the road because they're going to go across the highway. Got another group ready to go. Across this cornfield.
you can see that first group going over the interstate. That's Interstate 88. Now it's my turn to go. I'm on the 26th minute. It's 26 minutes after 10. We'll get the countdown. As Steve gives last minute instructions. And right next to me is my friend, ISDE gold medalist, one of the fastest guys in the woods, off road, and ice racer. It's Jeff Fedette. He's on the Kawasaki. I'm riding the WR250 Yamaha. This is my first time riding out in the woods. I took the bike out for a little bit to check it out. But I haven't rode any distances since last winter, ice racing, and last year's Bitter and Enduro, and off we go. too close to the riders in my group because I don't want the lens of the camera splattered. We're running across a bean field here. Pick up the speed. to the road, across this interstate. Now drop back to another field. There's a rider, he must have missed his minute. He's got to get ahead of my group. Fields are pretty nice. A little bit of mud out there. another bean field and into a corn field a little bit rougher in the corn field Across the road. And into another bean field. And open it up here, up to fifth gear. The riders already ran into trouble. coming to a road and everybody's slowing down because these guys are keeping track of the time, keeping track 
of the corners. You get a route sheet that tells you where to turn left, where to turn right. And I know we're going to be coming to a wood section. There's another group. They've slowed down. Now I'm thinking, should I move ahead? How am I going to do in the wood section? How tight are the woods? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, one time I talked to my friend Bill Wild about Enduros. He said, if you don't ride them all the time, the key is to go as fast as you can. And I said, yep, I'm not going to wait for anybody. They'll be able to pass me later. Let's get going. Let's get into the woods. Let's see how bad it is. Is it muddy? Is it real wet? Because even in the woods, you got to keep a 24 mile an hour average. And sometimes that gets pretty tough, especially when you don't have the experience, which I am definitely suffering from. I should have had this bike out and went riding during the summer, but it just then. So, yeah, let's just get ahead of everybody and start working my way into the woods. Oh, and you see that truck there? I think they're afraid there's going to be a checkpoint right away. Probably one of the little tricks that the brush poppers are using. As we enter the woods. Riders want to get by, or a rider. If they yell, I'll pull over because I'm ahead of schedule at this point. Over a log, another log, a little bit of mud. Yeah, I'm going to have a hard time keeping a 24 mile an hour average. I am. Don't have my dirt legs yet. out for them trees. Don't do anything goofy. These four riders wanted to get by. They're on schedule, so I'm still two minutes ahead of schedule, which is okay. back underneath the interstate. Well, I don't even know where we are now. <laughs> you see the arrows, just follow the arrows. Through the trees, another log. Get this bike rolling. Well, let's move ahead a little bit. Still got more woods to go through. Another highway to go under. A 
Oh, these are some great trails to go riding on. But I'm only averaging about 10 to 12 miles an hour. I'm not up to speed. Some guys really are making great progress. It's like anything else. You got to practice. You got to do it over another log. Riders want to get by, let them by. Tell you, I'm having a great time. I'm having Mark Trails to ride on. If this wasn't a competition, I'd have fun just riding out here. You want to get another cornfield to cut across? Nah, it just jumps right back in the woods. And another group of riders coming, I'll let them go. be in anybody's way. A little tight section here. Get underneath uh, get underneath this tree, I better slow down. I don't want to whack that camera. Take my time. Get over this log. And I'm on my way again. There's a rider, he see me slow down, he drove around. I'm saying some of these guys are so good, they can pick a trail. Oh, here's the first observation point. Now, this is not a time check. This is just points they set up. Just to make sure everybody is on the trail. You have to stay within the arrows on the legitimate trail and they're just checking. Just make sure you're still following the trail. I think I'm picking my speed a little bit. I'm gonna keep that guy in front of me in sight. And there's a whole bunch of different classes out here. A riders and B riders and classes according to the size of the bike. Plus you got your over 40, your over 50, your over 30. Another cornfield to lead us into another trail. A little different soil here, a little sandy mix. Two wheels and keep rolling. Another rider wanting to get past. I don't know if I'm still on schedule. Probably a couple minutes late because you're supposed to maintain a 24 mile an hour average. Head down, don't knock the camera off. I 
Another group of riders, and one of the riders yelling as he goes by is Tim Farrell from Illinois Harley. And I had a chance to talk to Tim. So let's go to that interview right now. I'm with Tim Farrell from Illinois Harley Davidson. And Tim, now you've been running all the Enduros this year, but you told me you, you switch classes. What, tell me, well, tell me a little bit about the class structure with Enduros. Well, there's uh, basically a, a Open A and a 250A, are the, the two big classes here at the Enduros. And halfway through the season, I got a new bike. And I switched from a Husqvarna to a, a Spanish bike, a Gas Gas. So I switched from the Open A class to the 250A class. And uh, unfortunately, your points don't uh, go with you when you switch classes. Classes, so I'm kind of out of the points race for this year, but uh, having a lot of fun on my new bike and really like it and looking forward to next year for the points races. Now, what's a double A class? Do they still run double A classes? Well, some of the states are different. Illinois doesn't have a established double A class. Those riders just race in the A classes. So you'll see like Jeff Fredette's here today and he'll be running uh, probably the 200 A class. Uh, but some of the other states like Iowa, uh, I believe Michigan and Minnesota, they have a double A class. Them are the real good guys. Yeah, they are usually the most experienced and the ones that go the fastest. All right, so what's the appeal of running Enduros? Uh, it's a lot of fun. A lot of different terrain. Uh, you know, today we'll see creek beds and hills and uh, a lot of cornfields, as you'll see. Uh, there's some interesting things today. We have some speed changes. And toward the end of the race, there's a 72-mile-an-hour section, which I've never ridden on, and uh, or I've never ridden at that, that uh, speed change so it's going to be interesting to do some timekeeping and going through the woods at 72 miles an hour is going to be quite a challenge. Alright well all I'm doing is going to start and go as fast as I can. You, just, you guys can keep track yeah. of the time. I just want to try to finish this thing. Well yeah today today is a good day for finishing. It's a, it's a pretty easy run because there's a lot of cornfields but uh, the weather always plays a part and as you can see it's real windy and probably about 45 degrees and uh, it's going to be fun definitely going to be a good time. Okay Tim I'll see you out there. Yeah I hope so. All right. <laughs> Continue on. Watch out for that tree. <laughs> What's up ahead? These riders get by me. Oh, what is this? This is a big dip. I use my head. Let's not do anything stupid. I got the helmet cam. Oh, that rider didn't make it. There's one, he made it, it looks pretty easy. Some of these guys make everything look easy. You know, let me uh, get my angle right. I can work my way through the undergrowth. And let's get this Yamaha turned around. Mm. Oh, that rider made it. I guess that might be the better way is to stick to the left. All right, straight down. Here we go. Whoa! Oh, no! Oh. Come on. Come on, Dan. Think. All right, let's back this thing up. Line it up. It isn't that hard. Okay. Get in first gear. Oh, almost like I know what I'm doing. As we move ahead, some of the class winners was in the 200A class was Mark Wilkins. 200B class was Wes Donison. 250A class was Randy Johnson. 250B class was Randy Colville. Oh, I got another problem in front of me. The overall winner was Tim Tyler. Now let's look at this. Let's not do anything stupid. Got a bike stuck on the right. And maybe I could try going up and around. Let's see how this goes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, don't do anything stupid. And let's look at this mud pile. Maybe it ain't that bad. All right. Moving a couple of logs for me. Thank you. 
Thank you. That should make it a little bit easier. I'm going to take my time. Down in here. On the gas. Through this rut. On the gas. Oh, I almost think I know what I'm doing. A couple of riders here. Excuse me. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay, in the open A class, it was Craig Hayes. In the open B class, it was Brian Holder. Senior A was Larry Cosby. In the senior B class, it was James Derry. And super senior, over 50, was Jim Spencer. I cut through this field, and I went on. I took fifth in the plus 40 class, or senior B class. And I think we're coming to the first checkpoint, but that's all the time we got. Music for the show by Engine, Mike Preetz, Intrigue and Travesty, and all his music toward at Fireside Studios, Westchester, Illinois. How's the camera? Well, I think it's still running. I was running at that obs observation point, so. I had a great time riding this event. For more information on District 17, go to www.amadistrict17.com. On Facebook, you can find Rush Popper's Motorcycle Club. Contact me, it's teamdan45 at gmail.com. I love to hear from my audience. Remember, you can always search on YouTube with Dan Schmidt, motorcycle racing, great motorcycle racing action. And I highly encourage you to visit the World of the Motorcycle Museum in Winnemac, Indiana, just off Indiana 39, four miles south of North Judson. Give them a call first at 574-896-3172. It's a great trip and a great collection of motorcycles.